Hey, what's up, everybody? I am back with Homeland Season 7 from Showtime. This is the season premiere review, getting into the spoilers. Obviously, I'm John Ware Jr. You can follow me at John Ware Jr. on the social media networks. And please subscribe to the YouTube channel. Now, the episode of, sorry, the title of this episode is Enemy of the State. And this carries a lot of relevance into the title of sorry into the what occurred in the episode it has nothing to do with the will smith gene hackman movie either now what we do have here is a president who is deemed a fascist by a lot of people uh rational vindictive uh president met <coughs> the madam president keen is kind of yeah she's on that level let's remember our dearest friend that we don't like mr brian o'keefe the journalist or the television or the media personality as it were he's actually on the run because he's being subpoenaed because he's under suspicion for trying to assassinate remember the assassination attempt from last season where we saw one uh peter quinn pass away which actually left me in complete tears so he's actually deemed enemy of the state we have 200 other people, one being Saul Berenson, locked up. Why? Because they're suspected of the of being involved in, in, in the assassination attempt of the, at the time, President-elect Keene. Now they're, and they're considered enemy of the state. You say anything derogatory, you're enemy of the state. You are very much, you know, in cahoots, or you even think about leaking information about the president in any negative fashion you are an enemy of the state which is in a sense to a degree a degree of fascism now i'm not sure if they're trying to make this keen a cross between um how people perceive president trump and um former uh and uh, hillary clinton but i do think that um it, this is a very interesting this may make for an interesting season so far, every season, everything's been with domestic terrorism in the sense like outside forces. But this is more into domestic terrorism within the country itself because you have people, you you're you know you got journalists or media personalities in O'Keefe's place, whatever. Um, he really is somebody who is deemed enemy of the state, but he doesn't have that that freedom of speech. He has freedom of speech, but there's consequences to that. And luckily there are people on the local level who think that he's not so much of a hero, but he may be a hero, but at the same time, he's kind of really, you know, you know, he's somebody that at least represents free speech at this point because their free speech is in danger because why people are getting locked up. Therefore they are enemy of the state. Saul Berenson, we got a chance to see him, um, the, um, the assistant to, President Keene went to actually go see him offering deals, the head of uh, national security, but he turned it down because obviously he wanted certain things. He wanted the two, the 199 other people released. I think that was an interesting, that was good on Saul's part of being a kind or a kind and gentle guy that he's always been um, so far this season. We'll see how that goes on because this is homeland for, <laughs> this is homeland for, <laughs> <laughs> for all intents and purposes, we do get a chance to catch up on uh, on Carrie and what she's doing. She's actually an unknown enemy of the state per that whole per, you know, per that standard. She's actually trying to take down the gov. She's trying to take down the president through the Senate using someone from the FBI. And he's in her source doesn't want to be named and is really trying to keep his head above water. And so she goes about all this, her usual tactics of sneaking people around and hiding people in trunks and carrying her gun and, you know, being a little deceptive and maneuvering and cunning as she's been since season one to get this information to a Senator uh, Paley, I believe is, is his name. I want to say Daly, but I think it's Paley. Correct me if I'm wrong, if it's Paley or Daly. But we're getting all the, but we're getting this. So she's trying to take him down through, she's trying to take the president down through um, through the Senate, obviously to possibly get some impeachment going, that type of stuff. Press wise, you can't, you know, she really isn't trying the press. Now, family life for her at this point, she doesn't have a job because apparently, because obviously she was let go and barred from the White House and speaking to the president at the conclusion of season six. 
Um, Franny is growing up and she's gorgeous. I believe the timeline after the conclusion of season six is about two to three months. So it's nice to see Franny growing up. I think the, I'm not sure if this is the same little actress. She's living with her sister and her husband, her sister's husband and the teenage daughter who's, you know, uh, ambitious and, you know, uh, vivacious and vigorous liberal, which is awesome to see because we're going to get, that's another dimension to the show. We're getting ready to add It's kind of like the left, um, the left, the liberals and being young and enthusiastic about being that, um, and kind of the conflict that goes on in the family where there's poly, where there's differing political views, or let's say for instance, um, her sister's husband actually works for the government. So, you know, to the daughter, he's an accomplice. So we're seeing all these things kind of mishmash, um, together. And we're getting, we, what we got was a very good episode, a good way to start the season full of intrigue. This did feel like an episode, like I, like she had a goal in mind and it failed. So she's got to move on to the next. We get max returning, planning a bug in uh Keen's assistant's home. Um, planting bugs all over the home, really. So she's going to be tracked. So apparently Carrie's going to be tracking him to get evidence, to get him out, to get president, Madam President Keene out. We have a general McClendon who was on the Navy yard and was convicted, uh, who was convicted of, I can't remember the charge, remember the charge. He got life in prison and Keene actually really wanted a capital offense to have him killed. And she said that in open court because apparently McClendon didn't sit when she was, didn't have a seat when she first took the stand. So now there's some turmoil there. He goes to jail. He actually dies. I think he was, he was poisoned by somebody. Now who actually poisoned him is unknown, but he also got a dishonorable discharge. He lost rank, all this other stuff. So yeah, his life, well, the remaining few minutes of his life, were just very, you know, embarrassing for him. Had to cough, bend over, open his butt cheeks, turn his head, drop his pants, all these different things that you go through when you go to jail so, uh, in West Virginia or almost anywhere else from what I understand. So all these things um, really are kind of wrapped around this idea that this new president is just, they're, I don't know if they're kind of putting uh, Madam President into this thing of where she's kind of, like Trump and Hillary or just Trump or how Trump's perceived. I don't know. You give me your thoughts on president King. You give me your thoughts and your expectations and of this and your predictions for season seven of Homeland from Showtime. Um, thank you all for listening last season. Hopefully more of you get to listen this season and give me your thoughts and your comments in the comments section about this episode, enemy of the state by Showtime's Homeland. Follow me on social media networks. It's at John Ward Jr. And please subscribe to the YouTube channel. Bye.